Hey everyone, welcome back to the Team Empire podcast. You're here with your host Shannon for episode 60. I just really want to quickly thank everyone for tuning into the pod on YouTube or Spotify or whatever on Instagram. I appreciate it a lot. Getting to 60 was quite a bit of a milestone, so I was pretty stoked about that. Um, And just a quick thank you to our sponsors for the pod, Infinite Aesthetics. Um, There's been a massive restock. I know all the girls love the Apex singlet, so jump on there. Use the code EMPIRE to support the pod. And I've been hooked up with some BSC from the from the boy Mike, if you guys know who Mike is. Um, he's hooked me up with some drinks. So I'm going to be sipping that coffee water throughout this whole pod because I'm a bit of a, <laughs> a bit of a drink hog. So thanks, Mike. Shout out to BSC. It's really good stuff. So I'll talk about that later. But my episode today, my guest today, she's been on before, back in episode 28 in June, July last year. So so much has happened since then. So I'm going to dive into all of that with her um, and we'll talk about it all together. So my, my guest today is now a physique pro or just a pro in general, IFBB, is Georgia Patchen. Hey, Georgia. Hey, thank you so much for getting me back on again, Shannon. It's, yeah, it's a pleasure. Yeah, we've got so much to talk about now, don't we? Because it was a different story last year. We do. We do. <laughs> um, so like nearly six months ago, you competed at the IFBB Nationals um, and it was an awesome show. It was awesome. It was, and you competed in two different divisions. You ended up taking away your pro card. We're going to dive into all of it. Everyone's going to want to know all the bits and pieces. But congratulations, first of all, on winning. That was amazing to watch. It was so good to be front and center to check you out. Um, but how have you been? Like, just talk about how how was your show day? Was it a great day all up? We'll talk about all the bits and pieces, but how was your show day overall? Did you enjoy that day and that win for you? Yeah, yeah, it was it was definitely a great show. And, like, for me, it was kind of last minute, about six weeks out, I kind of decided, oh, I may as well prep, you know, because I just finished a bit of a mini cut that turned into quite a long cut. Um, and, yeah, I was just, like, really just doing it to prove to myself that I could compete after my setback, as we touched on that in the last pod. Yeah. But, yeah, it was honestly, like, just such a cool day having those, like, close people around me that had been there, like, supported me through that setback, like, the whole way, like, Logan that coaching me into that comp um and obviously like my partner there um obviously like Strom was supporting and stuff my sponsors um so yeah it was a good day it was a big day um <laughs> when did you decide to do two divisions or did you already have that in mind when you were like I'm just gonna jump in what did you decide um yeah so I obviously like figure figures my heart and stuff but I decided that like a week out, I was like, I was like just lying down by Charles. I'm like, I might do physique, hey? Like, why, why the fuck not? You know, <laughs> um, just because I love the poses, like I love the back double. I, abs and thighs is, you know, probably one of my, well, abs is probably one of my best body parts when I'm like drilled down for a show. So I wanted to get up there and do that, you know, and then like having a routine was super cool as well because with figure you just get up and you do mandatories, you know, and it's like, it's a bit meh, you know, like it can be better, so. Totally. No, I love that. I'm glad you did it. I'm glad you did, but obviously it worked out really well. So anyone that doesn't know, you com- you competed in both divisions, but you won your pro card in physique. But once you won a pro card in IFBB, for anyone who doesn't know, you can compete in any division as a pro. So is your heart with physique or is it with figure? And which one are you going to pursue? It's a big question. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think like a lot of people knew that, like, oh, she's got no chance. She's She's a physique pro now, you know. Um, I'm definitely going to pursue figure because I know I have more potential and to like actually compete at a pro level, it's more probably achievable for me to compete in the figure category rather than physique. So, That's yeah. It. It's going to be the way she goes, everyone. Keep an eye out. And I think anyone that follows you knows that you're a, you're a figure girl, but um, I followed your I followed all your content, of course. So I already knew. I was like, she wants to hit those poses. And you did so good hitting those physique poses. Was it fun? It was so fun, eh? I loved it. Like hitting a back double, it's like, it's actually quite a, it's a hard but easy pose. And like, once you crack it, you just feel like you crack into it. You're like, yeah, you know. <laughs> That's good back there. Yeah, I love it. You did a really good job. Did you have any help with your posing for, to do the physique side of things? Or did you just kind of give it a go? Not really, yeah. Just because I've practiced them so much. I've been doing lap spread since I was like 17. And recently I'd learned the, like the back double. And yeah, just kind of made up my own routine. Like, because it was so last minute. I was a bit, I was a bit like not anxious about it but just a little bit nervous I'm like oh like is this gonna be all good and then when I saw like all the other like physique ladies doing this like real crazy things I'm like oh okay I'm just I'm just basic (laughs) but it worked sometimes the basics better it just saves you from any dramas you know um so since that calm anyway so how have you been how's your reverse been um and your like transition into the off season have you been healthy like what's been going on since then 
Yeah, lots, lots, really. <laughs> yeah, to be completely honest, like, I wasn't in the greatest space when I competed. Like, I was going through quite a dark time and um, I probably shouldn't have competed with, like, what I was going through Um, just in terms of, like, probably, like, some real bad struggles with, like, mental health. Um, And, yeah, I just realised that I kind of, like, just drove myself, like, mentally and physically into that whole, like, for what, you know? Yeah. Like, to get this pro card, but, like, it's pretty buzzy. Like, when I got this pro card up there, I almost felt, like, empty. Like, I had, like, no emotion. Mm. Um, and, like, my first thought was, like, like, I obviously know I'm not, I don't have a pro-worthy physique yet, you know? So it's, like, and, yeah. like, when you stand up there, it's kind of, like, oh, I'm the only one up there that actually doesn't have that pro-worthy physique yet, you know? But you kind of come around and you look at the glass half full um, and... Like, I just really realised, like, how hard I worked to get to that point, you know, and, like, what I had to put myself through. Like, it was so hard, um, like, going through depression into the show and stuff. And then, like, now I'm doing mentally, like, a lot better. Um, and obviously that made the reverse pretty rough as well, you could say. Like, um, obviously I was super excited to work with Meg and, like, get into things. But, like, my body was just, like, so worn out, you know. Like, I was, like had no energy training, like, was just tired all the time, like, yeah, and, like, my my food, like, obviously, you know, you kind of go to a pro coach and you're like, man, like, I'm going to reverse like a pro, like, let's fucking go, like, you're so amped, you know, and, like, I personally think, like, me and Meg just didn't see eye to eye in that sense of, like, she kept pushing my food up, like, too fast and too high and, like, appetite wasn't there, body fat was put on, and I know, like, with what I was going through mentally, that was a lot of her decisions into that. So mm -hmm. I don't like hold her to that, you know. Um, but I just think that the process could have gone probably a lot smoother and I could have transitioned to my off season a little bit better. Um, but obviously like when you are going through a pretty mentally rough time, like it's really important to get yourself healthy and yeah, you know, get your menstrual cycle back, um, and just like get that body fat on so that you are healthier. Mm -hmm. Um but then, you know, when you are going through like mental struggles as well, it's like when you see your physique and you like you know, that body dysmorphia and things like that. Um, it's super, yeah, it was all just like a bit of a roller coaster, really. <laughs> yeah, it's hard enough, like, to get through a prep as it is, you know, let alone already being in a darker place and then you've got to try to fight all those fuck. Like, that's crazy hard how you, I don't know how you did that. But would you, do you think you would have done anything differently? Would you have, like, maybe not gone on with Meg and just reversed yourself? Or, like, do you think maybe you, you would have changed anything? Or do you think it's just gone the way it's gone because it was just the way it is? Good question, good question. So, like, I feel like I wasn't ready to jump on with Meg at that point in time, but like myself, I'm always like over committing myself in future. And like when I, then I was realizing shit, this is like so overwhelming. Like it was like the most in detail coaching thing I've ever had. It was like, what's your weigh in time? Like um, how many bowel movements that day? What was your stress? Um, just trying to remember like fatigue levels, um, for like training in training sessions. And then like just in general, um had any off meals kind of thing like it was just like every like put in your time for every single meal and like so like, I'm sorry babe like I can't even like do this right now like I just need to like get in my meals like I'd get to the point where it's pretty bad like I just didn't have my appetite and just didn't really feel like I deserved to eat and you know it's just like really rough like it was probably rougher than like when my mum actually passed away from cancer so like it's a bit of a massive wake-up call to be fair um but I just wanted to yeah, I guess just talk about this openly because, you know, bodybuilding from the scenes, you might have, like, seen my page. People see my page, they're like, wow, she looks amazing or, wow, she's doing so well. But you don't know, like, what's going on behind the covers. And, like, personally, like, I know, like, competing, the way I was feeling was not, like, the right thing to do. But I was just kind of like, I'm not going to be, be competing for a few years and because I've got this setback, this injury that I'm dealing with, so I may as well fucking do it. I've driven myself this far. Let's just let's just keep fucking going. That was me at that point, you know. Yeah. Um, but like mentally and physically, you want to be in like a pretty good space before a prep, and I'm sure you'd agree, Shannon. You know, percent, hundred percent. It's so detrimental. Like it's so hard. We've got the whole way through. Everything's so hard, and you don't even realize until like you're at, you're at deep, you know. And if you're already fucked, you. That's just really, really hard. So props to you, babe, for getting out of that. And you're feeling, like, better now? Are you sort of, like, still on the up or are you pretty well set now? Are you all good? Um, Yeah, no, I'm feeling a lot better. Like, it makes it hard for those people around you as well, eh? Like, definitely hard for my partner, Charles, but he's super supportive through that journey. And, 
you know, like we've just been able to grow closer from that. It's like me, like had just that tendency to push people away and, you know, shut people out. And that's what most people do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, honestly, like doing a lot better. Um, I had to just like pull the pin on working with Meg. Um, and that wasn't because like, I didn't like her as a coach or anything like that. It was just because of what I was going through and it was too overwhelming for me at the time. And like to get two steps forward, sometimes you have to take that step back. And um, I decided to just, well, over the new year, actually, I was like doing a PT session with Campbell. He's also on Strom. Um, and he like just had all these out there exercises for me and was very like relative to my injury. Like even though it had been like, a year kind of thing I was still struggling with exercise I still was unable to complete some sort of exercises with the leg and there still was niggles so it was real like personalized training or right. that leg. and just like new movements just real different movements you know just to help bring that motivation up and just yeah. to like help get the love back that I had for training and for bodybuilding and for nutrition and everything after feeling so low so yeah did that for about eight weeks and now I'm just currently oh and Charles would just help me out with like nutrition through that point and yeah. obviously to go into kind of a bit of a mini cart and after that process um but now we're like on the come up from that and I'm I'm done I'm like you know like let's push this food up so we're responding pretty well to be fair and I'm maintaining around about 60 63 keeks um eating about two and a half thousand calories um and like that's just on the daily like I don't have it like a lower rest day or a higher training yeah. day I'm trying to no. get that really, like really prime to that food and then we'll just slowly push up like real small increments like 10 grams of oats 10 grams of rice flour you know like none of this like 300 calorie pushes each time because I just feel like your body just doesn't get that chance to adapt you know so I'm with you on that for sure so and you're quite like how tall are you you're a little shorty aren't you yeah I'm like 165 <laughs> so when people hear like 2500 for a physique like she's short so don't worry like, don't worry she's eating a lot <laughs> it's quite a bit yeah. of food but it's good right and you oh, feel like I love my meals eh? and I'm super hungry at the moment and that's what you want you don't want to be like because I was eating like maybe 3100 calories with me and I was just like I just felt like a way away I was just I knew it was too much at the time it's like you need to slowly build up to that and it's kind of a bit disheartening because you work so hard to get into that lean state and then like you lose it like quicker than what you want yeah yeah um, yeah for sure I just yeah. to a, sorry you go um no no I was just like it's unmotivating like when you feel like you're like going too quick you're like no <laughs> just and, drop me out of it. and you've got to like obviously you need to put on body fat but mm. just be like I guess mentally ready for that reverse and to see that body fat and someone that's a first timer probably doesn't really understand that process so yeah, yeah. Like, what was it like was it like was it cool to work with Meg and like did you speak to her in person and what was that like because a lot of people Jess Schofield asked about it I have to say for her but was it cool to just work with her personally for a wee while it honestly was like it was such a cool experience and I know that I didn't give it a proper shot working with her like you know um I'm just kind of working with my partner at the moment and in future there's nothing to say that I wouldn't go back to me, you know, but it was just like when you're paying like such a high price as well and you know you're not giving it your all and you're not able to get the results that you want to calibrate, then it's, you know, it's just not the right time. But, yeah, it was super great. Like, you know, it was there was feedback, there was voice messages for videos, for training, just for anything. Like she was there to support like through my mental health journey as well, like not just like I'm your nutrition coach, I'm your training coach and that's it you know don't talk to me about anything else but she obviously she dates a bodybuilder so she understands everything and like that um in terms of like relationship wise there was just so much that she could relate to and talk to and yeah oh. it, it's definitely a big step up and yeah I really enjoyed it enjoyed the process and she's like a day out she's like actually I think she's competing tomorrow she looks fucking insane like, I'll actually just pull her up. Because... Yeah, pull her up. She looks crazy good right now. And how she coaches, like, when she's so on all the time. Like, how do you have energy, girl? <laughs> like... She um, is real onto it with her with her stuff, eh? Like, oh, my gosh. Um, like model, hey? I'm going to turn the music off. But, like, this is <laughs> her front relaxed is. Oh. Look, if, guys, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see it here. But if not, go check out her Instagram. Holy. Look at her legs. Oh. Wow. But you can see it like in her recent training videos, like you can see the like in her yes. face. You know, but she's got like insane wits, man. Like watch this like, back, back lap. And like her glute ham time. 
god, she looks crazy. Her good. quads are insane too. Like is she doing the is this the Arnold she, South America? Um, I don't actually know. Checked in ready for tomorrow. I don't know what show know what she's show she's doing. doing. There's a few shows on at the moment. The Arnold South America's on it. I don't know if you follow like or and know Anthony Mantello. He's like a US, um classic guy and he's I think he might be three days out. So I'm like, I was just trying to like, is this yeah. the same different show, you know? There's um, so many on, I can't give up. Hey, and like Aussie's about to start and it's like, fuck, I don't know. It's great. It's a good time of the year. Love it. Um, so how was your 2023? So I was going to say, ask how your 2023 off, like your season was, but you didn't even really think you were going to compete. So what were you up to last year? Were you like thinking it could happen or were you just kind of like cruising because you were at TOC handing out medals or you were just, you're amongst it, but did you have no idea you were going to compete? What were you thinking about? No, I had no idea, eh? I actually didn't, like, it wasn't until I kind of went up for TOC. I think it was when I chatted to you at Flex. Do you remember that? And it was, yeah. like, probably not that long after that where I was like, I'm going to fucking do it, you know? Yeah, you looked good at Flex. I was like, she's got to do it. Um, yeah, I was just, it's like, mm, well, when you've, like, worked so hard and with what I went through just to, like, even get to where I was after, like, a crash and breaking my leg and stuff, you know, I was like, why not? But I kept it. Because I wanted to announce it, but I actually kept it on the low. Nice. Like, yeah. Which was almost just took that little bit of pressure off in a way, you know? Yeah. So I wasn't, like, obviously expecting to, to come in and turn pro either. Um, But I was really just competing to, like, because I love the sport and because it's, like, being able to do what I love again, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, it was pretty good 2023 season. Like, I just... Started the year, obviously, rehab, <laughs> obviously, recovery. Couldn't train anything, to be fair. Couldn't walk, um, as that we touched on in the last pod. So it was a massive journey in terms of, like, maybe six weeks after my crash to, like, doing upper body again, slowly getting back into that. Um, even with my cast on and my wrist and stuff, I was still trying to do pull-ups and flies and shit, you know. Um, but I just do, like, my rehab religiously. And then, yeah, slowly could just increment up in the world and, do you know more exercises and start started at the bottom and just slowly worked my way up and then I was able to like kind of train like pain free again so you just feel like a whole sense of gratitude when that that point came and yeah. it was only a bit of a detrimental cut and then do just decided to keep going so that was yeah. that really. worked <laughs> yeah. um what is your plan now what are you up to are you what are you doing in the gym are you like obviously you're going to continue with figure so are you building in certain areas are you trying to like what are you doing with your with your training and physique and stuff yep so after finishing up with Campbell I was running a bit of a bro split um which was kind of fun you know it was just like just to obviously what we mentioned to help with the happiness and just gain that passion for training again whereas now I'm going into a split where I'm working on bringing up my posterior chain. So like width, back thickness, glutes, hamstrings. Um, and the split's looking like a back day. Um, then I have a push day. Then I have like a posterior day. So like hamstrings and back. And then I have like a delts and arms day. And then it's like a lower day. So like more like quad kind of glute focus. Um, so yeah, I'm about two weeks into that. And I'm really enjoying it so far. So Nice, babe. What's your favourite muscle group, group to train? Is it still the same or has it changed? <laughs> um, I do love, like, obviously back, but I do love training legs as well and, like, quads, to be yeah. fair. I just love the love the challenge in it, eh? Like, yeah. I love just being able to push myself. So I feel like yeah. you can really get it from a leg session as opposed to, like, a side raise, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can lift a bit more too, hey? <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, God damn it. And you walk out just feeling like, mm, like the legs are all. I love it. Um, your YouTube has been so much fun to watch. I'm so happy you have stuck to that because I know we talked about that last time and you're like, I'm building my content and now your channel's growing and every time I see a video I come up, I watch it and it's always got views. Um, it's hard. YouTube's a fucking slug, but <laughs> so it's worth the effort. Um, but how's it been going? Are you enjoying creating content? Tell everyone else if they haven't seen what you're putting on to your YouTube and stuff like that so they can go and check it out as well. What, what is it like doing that content creation? Yeah, um, thanks for that. Thanks for the support and stuff anyway. Um, but yeah, it's been really fun to make videos and stuff. And it's always been like a goal for me. I suppose like the goal was to live that like pro bodybuilding lifestyle, like be able to like make money off YouTube um, and like coach and then 
just live the life that I want to, you know, for me and my partner. And um, we love it. Like Charles has actually had quite a bit of experience with YouTube and he was making money off it back in the day, like making like reaction videos. So hence why he's real onto it and like it's been real, like a real help to have him there. And yeah, we just kind of, we obviously watch YouTube and started to do that and we're like, why couldn't we do this, you know? And we just chuck up videos, like training videos, like days in the life, like just try and get like content and capture capture our life that we kind of live. So when we're in Aussie, we were able to like capture that, capture rest days, going to like top golf and theme parks and stuff like that and not just like, not just training, you know? Yeah. So. And it's cool to watch it back, hey? And it's like watching your own journey and it'll always be there. So it's kind of cool for you as well as the viewer. 100%. And it was real cool to... Well, that's when I decided I'd make it when um, I was on peak week for the comp and I call it the comeback series. So I've got like a whole playlist in my YouTube channel where you can watch like every day leading up to the show, like show day, like recapping on show day, like recapping on the whole journey. Um, but yeah, I'm just G-Patch on YouTube. So yeah. yeah, appreciate the subscribe, the follow, like some vids, watch some vids. Um, yeah, awesome. Yeah. It all goes a long way, guys. Honestly, it does. Like, liking a video is so much more than what it sounds like. But do it anyway, and I'll put your link in the description for everyone on YouTube and Spotify so they can just click through and have a little look at what you're up to. Who do you watch on YouTube? Like, who are your favourite? Like, like you said, the body build. I watch a lot of that shit too, but who's your favourite? I've been enjoying, well, Charles and I have been enjoying Anthony Mantello's videos lately. He's been doing, like, daily uploads for his comp, and he's, like, three days out, two days out now, something like that. Um... You know, Siva, um, Hunter Labrada, we like watch it. We watch probably a bit more males than females. Um, and obviously, like, you know, just those people are oh, like Honey Rambold and just some of the training sessions that he does, um, like Cuba and Meg. Um, yeah. There's lots, and everyone's doing it now. So it's worth like jumping into YouTube. And it's motivating. If you're on prep right now, like, we're, like, 17 weeks out from our first se first comp of the season in New Zealand. So, like, this is a good time to get there. Oh, like, like when you're doing your man. Watch yeah, that shit. Yeah. Like, there's nothing more motivating than watching, like, your idols, like, doing their shit. You know, it's fucking awesome to watch. It's fun. I'm training boring to watch, but I quite like the Machiavelli motivation. I don't know how to pronounce it. I think that's it. But yeah. that's, like, that's fucking real good. Like, that gets you, like, real drilled in, like, dialed in, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Love those ones. And Olympia TV's got a really good channel on YouTube too. So anyway, just go through the YouTube algorithms and get that. Get it. Just follow G Patch first and then do the rest of it. <laughs> but it's always worth it. It's always a good place to be. Um, what is I know we talked a little bit about it briefly, but what is your nutrition like at the moment? Is it are you on like a meal plan? Are you like sticking to your targets or are you kind of eating a little bit free range? Like what what are you up to? Uh, always, always on plan. <laughs> um. <laughs> <laughs> um just like about off meals and stuff though you know like I felt like real motivated just to follow my plan the whole week get into routine you know eating your meals is easy and then like when it comes to a league day game over let's have some fun <laughs> <laughs> like Charles and I went pretty hard just like we were in Dunedin for the weekend we actually went down to Dunedin to do like a training boot camp um just to train at some different gyms there and use some like different pieces of equipment that we don't have here in Christchurch which is a bit Bit weird because obviously you'd expect crush it to have better kind of equipment here than some stuff in Dunedin, but but hey, yep. um, <laughs> but yeah, we went and got like Thai, just so it was like a little bit of a healthier main meal you could say for the cheat. And then we got like five donuts from night and day, half those, and then we got like a pack of like six caramel lava cakes from um New World, and then like heated them up in the air fryer and had it with like a half halo top each and then I like had some easter eggs too so it's pretty big cheat I don't know like how many calories I have in like my cheat meals to be fair sometimes it's tracked sometimes it's not yeah. obviously something like easter you know you want to um you want to enjoy it but when the body's like in a responsive state you know you can kind of know how much you can push yourself you know in terms of food like it's a little bit of a binge but it's like good because you feel motivated to get back on plan right away yeah and training the next day is great <laughs> yeah 100% and like if you I feel like if you didn't like not over well overeat in a way and not like enjoy yourself and feel satisfied then you're most likely going to like have those little stints in the week and be like I want to eat that or like you could eat more off plan whereas it's just like no nah, you go hard on that one day with that one meal and that's yeah. all she 
Yeah, and that's good. It depends on your mindset, eh? Like everyone can be maybe a little different on either way, but maybe try both and see what works for you. But I'm the same as you. Like if I and if you don't push yourself to that point, you're not you're not gonna be like, oh, that did feel a bit shit. This is why I don't do it every day, you know? Like it's like a reminder. But yeah, I'm so like that as well. What is your favorite cheat meal at the moment? Do you like Thai or is it just what is your favorite? Uh we had pizza hut the weekend before I just like got a deal, but um we're gonna make like homemade fried rice tomorrow, but yeah, I'm pretty easy. Like, I do love a good burger, but like, I mean, eight burgers every night on plan anyway. So, yeah, yeah, nice. How about are, you? Are you still posing at the moment? Like, practicing? Um, when I'm training and stuff, and obviously with chickens and that, but probably just like not not in the heels and like not doing as much um, as obviously I would be if I'm prepping for a show, but definitely still in there with the off season, as you know, it's a massive priority. You still have to, still have to pose and, yeah. Do it. It's got to be done. Which will probably lead me to my next, but like the, probably the biggest question: What are you going to do next? Like, what what is the next plan for you, babe? When do you want to compete, or do you want to just like fully fucking spend some time growing? Like, what are you going to do? Well, it'd be stupid to jump on a pro stage when you're going to come last. Yeah, not today. <laughs> but like, yeah. Um, well, just work on building that pro worthy physique. Really, eh? That's that's where I'm. Com- I'm like feeling committed. Like, this is probably like the first proper off season. Because, like, when I had my crash, I was, like, seven weeks reverse diet or seven weeks post-show, and then it happened. So I didn't even really get a proper off-season last year. Like, it was just trying to, like, rehab the leg again, like, not even necessarily grow it. But I'm really – like, it was pretty crazy how my legs did turn out and, like, better than 2022 when I competed, even though I snapped a finger. So it's going to ask much more there. But just grow, honestly, just grow. And then when the time's right – you know, just grow, grow a little bit and then pull back when I need to. In yeah. terms of body fat, get a bit more responsive, grow again. Um, yeah, what am I, like, 63 kilos at the moment? What is a, I suppose a good goal at just short term would be, like, get to 65 fasted, but then, like, have very similar, even maybe, like, better body composition and then, like, in the long term, crack that 70 kilos, that'll be me. Yeah, that's a good goal to have, you know, like, it's reachable. Like, you can, you like, I can do that. <laughs> I love it. Um, do you have any, do you have any, like you probably don't, but do you have anything in your mind? Like I would love to get on the stage by, by 2026 or like 2025. Like, do you have anything in your mind like that? Yeah. When I was with Meg, she had the timeline for me starting a prep in 2025. Um, but I'm thinking maybe like 2026. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah. see what we're like in 2026, I reckon. We need like this whole year to grow and then whole next year and then see where we're at for 2026. Yeah, and that sounds like a lot of time to a lot of people that might, that might not have competed or whatever, but it's not. Like, the, the the seasons go, like, that fast, you know, so you it's not that long. It kind of seems like a long time, but it's a good – it'll be a good project for you to keep working on it, and I'm sure you'll be so motivated about it. Um, Is there a pro show that you're, like, that you would love to compete in, like, when the day came? Is there, do you have a favourite or a couple of favourites that you watch? Yeah, I – Watch, like, a few of them and stuff. I'm not, like, really too fast in, like, what show it would be. But, like, maybe somewhere in, like, the US, UK or, like, Canada, like, Toronto, Vancouver, maybe Florida. You know, like, just somewhere where you can really, what's the word? Just, like, explore and, like, see different parts of the world. Like, I haven't been to visit too many countries to eat here. I've only been to, like, Raro when I was 13 mm-hmm. and then, um, Australia. And Charles and I have just recently been to, like, Gold Coast and that's, Actually, a destination we're looking at moving to maybe end of this year. So, oh, we're losing another one. <laughs> You'll all be back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you got to do it. You got to do it, eh? Um, is it just for the quality of life? Why do you think? Do you like? Did you just love the gold even you went there? Um, I've I've got actually family there and just love it, eh? Like just the lifestyle that we're wanting to live. And when we went there, you know, like there's just more like a better environment for what we're trying to thrive in you know um there's so many like committed people there I'm not saying there's not committed people here but like there's just more you know um over in Australia and just obviously the competition um and is higher there and then when you like look at the US and UK it's even higher so it's kind of that good bridging stone in between um, because we were like quite keen on the UK, but it's just so far, man. So um, we'll start start with Aussie because it's only a three hour flight from home, and lots to explore still. And True. we love it. Just the gyms, you know, gyms are just like top tier. Yeah. Uh, we were at the World's Gym in Burley, and um, 
pretty pretty good like some of the stuff similar here but like a lot like a whole full like massive gym room just for legs and then you've got your upper body stuff over there and um pretty much like yeah they got everything it's pretty cool and we trained at this like real bodybuilding gym in brisbane called rigs and um uh you can tell it's a bodybuilding gym because they've got like all these different pieces of kit not just like all hammer strength or like all cybex it's like different pieces of equipment and even some stuff we don't have here in NZ. And like, have you heard of Prime? Prime equipment? Yeah. Oh, I love that. So they've got everything, eh? It's like, oh, you spend hours in the gym over there. <laughs> Which is a good thing. Yeah. And it's cool to put yourself, like, into the next level up of people, like, you know, intimidate yourself maybe with some of the people around. Like, it's quite cool, you know, like, throw yeah. yourself there. For that challenge and surround yourself with, you know, almost like people that are doing better than you because then yeah. that motivates you more rather than, like, putting yourself in maybe an environment where you're already kind of – you know, there in a way, if you know what I mean. Like, I'm not saying, like, I'm top dog here. Like, oh, that's I know what you mean. Thing. I totally get it. Not at all, but, like, more just, like, you can go to the gym and you kind of, like, you feel jacked, you know. People, like, you kind of don't compare to some people there because they're just, like, your everyday gym goers, and that's that's cool, you know. People go to the gym for whatever they want to go to, um, whatever they want to go for, I mean. But, like, just when there's, like, a full gym of bodybuilders, they're all, like, massive jacked, and you're, like, whoa, now I feel small. No, yeah, you know. yeah, it's like the other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's puts you, you know, in that motivational environment. 100%. And just on that note as well, like the content creation what we were talking about, it's still not like normal here, but over there it's normal. So I love that you're doing it here because you're making it more normal. Like you're making that kind of like, come on, catch up New Zealand. Like it's okay to do content as long as you're doing it respectfully in the gym and whatever. It's like, it's normal. So in Aussie, you're a normal person. <laughs> Over here, it's like these G-patch fucking filming a workout again. You know, sometimes it can be like that. So I love that you're doing it here and keep keep doing it because we need more of that. And our athletes really need to keep to pushing it because we've got so much potential and talent here. It's like, it's not out there yet. Like these guys should push it like you do. So um, yeah, why not? Keep us posted on your Aussie adventure if that ends up happening um and obviously we'll still keep in touch of course um how is coaching going because you're a coach too and we don't talk about this much we've talked more about your athlete side of things but how's coaching going what do you coach for so people can get in touch if they want to and yeah just how's it all going yeah great thank you um it's definitely been a grind you know like because i would never been a PT before I remember like I first started you know when um we had that first pod and that's when I was like just started my personal training journey and not being in like maybe you could say suboptimal position um you know pts at the gym that i like work at were kind of you know like leads and stuff like a little bit of a struggle like struggle there like obviously there was a space for me to fill being a female personal trainer and no other females at that time um but yeah it's like client retention and stuff like that is definitely something that you know it's just like you almost need to be coach for your pt you know <laughs> and that's what i'm actually doing now like i've got a guy at my gym and he has been like 10 years experience in the game so I'm like getting mental by him just so that I can like up level up skill and um keep going in that journey you know and then it's obviously quite good to have both like the in-person PT you can look after people here in Christchurch because that's where I'm based and then um all parts of New Zealand you know they can become online coach I mean online coached by me yeah um where they can find me just like on Instagram to be fair. I've just got like a coaching link in my bio as most online coaches do and just give that one a fill out and then we can see if we'd make the right fit. But generally I just coach anyone. Eh? I've actually got my first client that I'll be prepping for a show this year. So I'm really, really excited mm -hmm. for that. Um, and she's, she's an amazing client. Um, her name's Liv. Um, she's going to be doing figure as well. So in New Zealand. Yeah. She's doing white models. Um, oh. so I'm really I'll be coming to that show and then TOC, yeah, probably like come up for that show as well. Help out Uncle Shane. Um, yeah. Nice. And you're making up for nationals maybe or see how you go? It's a bit we'll like see. We'll see. Um, see when the timing and stuff of it all is as well because obviously with the move, potential move to Australia and stuff. So, yeah, but now coaching's, coaching's going well. Like it's definitely cool being able just to, you know, help people and help them achieve their goals but I guess being a coach and you probably understand this as well it's like when you 
when a client comes to you and you know like that goal their goals for them aren't like super high on their priority list like that level of effort that they're going to be giving towards that goal is not going to be the best and then like you have this pressure like they like come to you and like not like they want to look like you or maybe they do and it's like mate like you know we've got a long way to go like we're just beginning so it's like about like I guess creating like those realistic goals that your clients actually can achieve um and you know some of them they they need that extra push like it's not just going to fall out the sky for your love you know <laughs> yeah you've got to push them sometimes hey baby or break it down break their goals down into smaller steps and be like this is gonna be hard but, but <laughs> pretty it's, much. what's that pretty much how's your coaching yeah. going anyway yeah, it's going good. It's going, the start of the year is always a big time of the year, you know? Um, so yeah, it's been fun and I'm enjoying like coaching my clients at the stage as well. Like you're doing this year, it's going to be fun. So I've got a wellness and a bikini in there. Um, but it's just, yeah, it's just fun to watch them grow away eh? and like then how they achieve it. And it's just like the most heartwarming job ever. I love it. And I think I'll probably do it forever. What about you? Do you think you'll do it forever now that you've started? Yeah. Like it's definitely the goal just to build that up and build the YouTube and yeah just being able to do what you love is cool way and like you've done a few shows now so you've got that experience and then you know every time like you invest in a coach yourself I feel like you can almost use that as like an educational mm -hmm. for your own coaching and to help upskill your coaching when you've had like that guidance from someone else above you um yeah. so it's cool being able to like apply that to your clients and see what works and see what doesn't work and obviously every everybody's different yeah everyone's body is going to respond different some might respond in the way that you want to some may not and it's just about learning and upskilling yourself hey yeah always hey like you can't just be like oh, i know everything now and that's it <laughs> there's always something to learn <laughs> and get up your ass like that hey <laughs> <laughs> get a new coach if that's what your coach thinks about themselves <laughs> it's not how it's done um i was going to ask about the red suit so we always see you in the red suit which i love i think that's your color but do you reckon have you got in your mind you might throw a different color in there in your approach like i mean that's a long like it's a bit of way away but i love getting excited about it with you so do you have you thought about different suit colors oh definitely like i'll definitely get another suit for um my pro debut it was just last minute decisions you know just to compete and yeah just wore the red one again and it looks good like it suits you really well but like i just i see you in a green yeah, they're so expensive. I actually wore like a green, a kind of a green for my first comp. Ooh. It was, um, a girl lent it to me, which is quite nice. I'll I didn't see up. that. Have you put that on your Instagram? I have put it on before, yeah. Way down the bottom. Because <laughs> I've done some scrolling. <laughs> back, back, back. Yeah, all the way back. Yeah, green I feel like would be a great colour with you for you as well. Love it. Yeah, another thing with like coach relationship, like coach client relationships as well. Like I'm very big on with my clients, like not like it's my way or the highway. Like I've worked with coaches in the past where they don't really give you a say, you know, and I feel like just to get the best results, you need to be on the same page. You need to like respect your clients and what their wants and needs are. And then, you know, they might suggest something that is maybe suboptimal and you'll just say like, hey, this is like that's not optimal and that they give them a reason to like why we're doing this. I feel like as a client, you always have, um, you should always be able to ask questions and get a good in-depth answer. If, you're, if your coach cannot like answer your questions or like doesn't respect your questions in a way, then like you're working with the wrong coach, right? I agree with you, babe, 100%. Like they should be happy to educate you that that's part of their job. <laughs> like if they can't answer your questions, then what the fuck? Yeah, it's like you want to almost teach your clients so that they can one day be able to do things on their own. Like if they're not, a, if they're just a lifestyle general client, you know, you want to be able to install like what intuitively eating is, um, how they can track their macros, how they can like, I think like sustainable weight loss is something that a lot of people struggle with. And then you find like, oh, this is so embarrassing. Oh no, I lost it. Um, but yeah, sustainable weight loss is something that people just struggle with. Eh? Like it's, it's reverse dieting, all of that stuff. I feel like it's underrated and coaches don't teach it enough as they need to, but that's why we talk about it here. <laughs> Call them out. <laughs> oh, dang. oh, that looks nice. It's like a blue green, eh? Blue green? Like a turquoisey kind of color. And then this was me in bikini. Well, you guys are watching on, oh my God, your bikini way back. Tournament of champs. Yeah, <laughs> it's 2020. <laughs> covid year and everything wow throwback look how far you've come look how far you've come girl that's crazy all right we'll keep an eye out for a different color when you do your pro debut i'll be following that for sure and you'll be back on the pod no doubt because we'll have to chat about that when it comes um 
How, yeah, I was going to ask you about your mental health as well, but we've already kind of touched on that. But how, is it, are there anything that you're doing at the moment to like just make sure your mental health is all good? Because you've been through that now. Do you want to kind of like, you want to keep yourself where you are? Do you do like something every day? Do you meditate? Do you, what is your kind of thing you do for mental health? Um, lol, I actually got something right here, like gratitude journaling and stuff like that. Um, oh. used to try and do like a little bit of that. And, but then obviously like seeing a doctor, um, seeing a counselor, um, working through like actually like online therapy stuff as well because like it's easy to say like you have depression and like you know what you feel and it's fucking horrible but like actually understanding why and like why you feel that way and everything that goes behind it like it, it I found it quite cool to actually like just educate myself a little bit in that area a bit more yeah. um, because I feel like for me like it's probably been something that's been like building up but I've always been so good at like keeping myself busy and like wasn't until like obviously last year moving down here being a little bit like self-isolated you know that was like the kind of job that we live you know um and yeah just kind of working another job as well um just keeping my mind busy and yeah no I'm really like on the come up from from there nice. and, That's yeah it's and it's good. doing things that make you feel good that make you feel happy and just trying to be present all the time and yeah yeah yeah, for sure. I love that educating yourself on mental health because it can make you feel more, dare I say, normal. But like, it like it makes you feel like, oh, there's a fucking answer for this stuff. <laughs> like, I'm not just crazy, or like you just understand it a bit better. That can really help. Hey, eh? I feel like it definitely like just calms you out a bit more. But I love that, babe. And journaling is always really good, especially to get the shit out in those bad times. You can just write it all down. Yeah, um, I remember like journaling one day after our last pod that we did. I was like, I had a pod with Shannon. She's so lovely. <laughs> I made it in the journal. Fuck yeah. I love that. Oh, thanks, babe. You're so sweet. Um, oh, the, I was going to ask about your pro show, but we're going to we're gonna see that when it comes to it, about your ultimate dream pro show. We'll see what, what happens when you get there. But who inspires you at the moment? I know I asked you this last year, but do you have any, anyone, who, who inspires you? It doesn't even have to be in bodybuilding. It can be in anything. It can be in life, just in general. But what, like, what keeps you going? Oh, definitely my mum to start. I've got her tattooed on in here um yeah tina marie like she definitely inspires me like with whatever i do with whatever i put my mind to looking at a photo of her over there too um yeah just with what she went through like even through my whole recovery it's like this is not harder than fighting cancer not harder than losing your life to cancer so you know hardy tonu girl hardy tonu um mm-hmm. definitely definitely mum just with like seeing her journey not even knowing that she was going to die at the time you know um, but she was just so strong. She hid it from us. I was only 17. My little sisters as well, like 14 and 10. So um, recently watched that Phil Heath doco. Have you watched that? I haven't watched it yet. No, nah, it's saved. I need to get onto it. That's on YouTube. <laughs> just <laughs> <laughs> um, That was actually quite inspiring, like just to see like the setback that he kind of went through and relate to it in a way obviously different. Obviously, like he's an Olympian. <laughs> um, yeah. um, but, you know, just to be able to relate to that and learn a little bit more about like what goes on in a Olympian's mind as well. It's quite cool. Um, obviously like Meg, obviously I've got like, you know, a few of those figure athletes that motivate and inspire me as well. Obviously some of the male bodybuilders, I think there's like a whole variety. Um, even like Logan, my, my old coach, um, he does my partner, you know, like so many people do. Um, just seeing, you know, anyone around like yourself, you know, I think there's, we've got a cool wee environment and cool wee community here in New Zealand and yeah. Yeah, cool, babe. I love that. It's just finding the right people for you that like you, you would gel with, hey, and you would relate to or whatever and um, yeah. keeps you going. I love it, babe. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Not all bodybuilding. You need other people in your life as well, hey. Oh, <laughs> yeah, so that- like what you're doing here, Shannon, as well, the pods is like awesome. Like congrats on episode 60. I'm really happy to be a part of it and like just how you've been able to grow some of the bodybuilding community here and like get people's stories out there. It's it's amazing what you're doing. So oh, thanks, I love it. It's fun. It's, it's fun, right? It's fun yeah. just having a chat. Yeah, hundred percent. And it's making everyone connect and like people like we didn't connect. Like no athletes really connected in these levels. So it's like now we all have to drop tall poppy and just be fucking nice to each other. <laughs> and it's cool. Like you don't see it as much, you know. I love it when it's all out there. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, babe. It's been really good. And you've been two of those 60 episodes, so it's been great to have you on. Um, what do would you say your long goal, long-term goals with the competing? Do you reckon like you can see yourself going like wanting to push for like Olympia? Or do you think like fuck knows what will happen? Maybe 
have kids one day like you know like do you do you really want to go all the way is that something in your mind i feel like the sky is the limit like yeah i just want to push as far as i can you know i feel like you have those doubters and you know everyone has a bit of hate here and there and um feels so good when you prove them wrong so yeah. <laughs> i'm gonna say not gonna say never um just gonna keep pushing and see what happens you know um, I think like anything is possible when you put your mind to it and yeah, it's pretty crazy. I'll talk about one thing um, that I really found real buzzy from my comp actually. So you know how we had a routine mm. and um, you know how you choose a song for it. Yeah. I was like, Oh, like I want that song to relate to like my mum passing away or my car accident. And then I was like, nah, they're too depressing. They're too depressing. Um, and then I like really liked the song waiting all night rudimental. I did make a post about it, but you've probably forgotten it anyway. I didn't know what that song was about, eh? Um, and it wasn't until I came back home and my flatmate was like, oh, why'd you choose that song? Like, do you know the meaning behind it? And I was like, nah. He's like, oh, we have to watch it. And I'm like, oh, okay. We chucked it on the TV. And um, it was just crazy. It gave me, like, goosebumps and everything. Um, it was about – so the song, well, the song is about this guy who was in, like, a BMX accident Um his leg got amputated. He had a massive, like, way more injuries than, like, what I did. But then the song is about, like, him learning to bike again. And what? I was like, you're fucking kidding me. That's, that's so fucking crazy. Holy that's shit. so fucking crazy. Like, it was just, like, it gave me shivers, eh, in my whole body because it was just so ironic because, like, I had no, like, hand over heart, I had no freaking clue what that song was about. I just liked it. And I just, I chose a song that, pretty much was exactly my journey as well. It's just like, nah. Yeah, it's crazy. I just, I just buzz out. I'd just watch my routine and I'd just buzz the fuck out. Eh? I'd cry watching it. I'd You just had lots of emotions, you know, but. Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's crazy. What are, what are the chances of that? Like it means you're on the track, it has to mean something, like, you know, yeah. it has to. Pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, even just to be able to, to be lucky to be alive, to be fair, and then to be able to come back and do what I love and reach my goal. Um when I'm no, I'm not a person that's got like my head up my ass. I'm a pro now, and that's yeah. all that means. It's like I know I've got a long way to go, a long road ahead, but I'm here for it. I'm here for the work, and I don't shy away from a bit of hard work. I actually love it and get stuck in. So yeah, that's what I love about you, girl. You're a hard worker, and you don't preach on about it, and you're not like a show pony. Not that there's anything wrong with being confident, but um, I love it. You're just so real, and I fucking love that about you. And you and Jordan always get my heartstrings going when you're on stage. I'm like, oh my god. I'm gonna fucking cry in a minute because just because I just you just know what you guys have been through, you know. You and you and Jordan have got like similar story kind of thing, but yeah, um, yeah we relate a lot. Yeah, it's quite cool. Like you guys just keep going, and it's just a testament to how hard you work and how strong your mindset is and stuff. Like to get through what you went through last season, as well as everything else. You've, you know, it's just crazy. So it's amazing. We all need a bit of that. So yeah, just keep being out there, babe, because it's great. And you're such an inspiration to people. Like you really are. Um, people just give up, you know people just let go and they're just like that's it it's like this is a sign i'm not supposed to do it or whatever and you're like no fuck that <laughs> i'm gonna keep going like, okay, fuck, that was no sign that was a sign that make this the best comeback <laughs> yeah it was like supposed to happen like all the things have just dotted in it's been amazing babe what's what was what's your favorite thing about competing like what what makes you keep coming back for it um it's got to be in like being able to push yourself hey eh? just being able to push yourself to that level that you know, most people can't, and, like, you just feel normal. You know you're a little bit crazy, you know, to do this shit in general, but um, just, yeah, I really like the challenge in it, and I like, I like being able to see, I suppose, that hard work, you know, like, no one can lift the weights for you. You know, they could be spotting you lifting the weight, but you're not going to get the stimulus in your muscle, you know, so you ain't going to get results from that, Um, but, yeah, and... I suppose I love like learning like I've been able to learn my journey and you would be the same you know like you learn what works well for yourself and like one thing that is big that I've learned is like full range of motion and like everything like just just a random thing that just popped up but like for example I can't use like full range of motion in my right leg because I can't feel the glute at like say the bottom really bottom of a Bulgarian split squat or something so like learning what works well for you and then what you get really good results off. And it's cool because 
you know, it's not one size fits all. It's not like everyone do three sets of 15 ladder raises. That's it. It's like some people, they're going to need more volume. Some people, they're going to need less volume. It's like, it's all like a little pieces in the puzzle that you're trying to figure out. And that's one thing that I learned, love about the journey as well, was just constantly learning and then the challenge and prep and just legit, just trying to be like 1% better every day. Yeah. But on that and just, just love being able to like apply myself to something that I'm so passionate and that I love and like having that goal and just knowing, I guess I'm just very big on like, um, giving 100% and like having 100% effort and not just applying that to bodybuilding, but having 100% effort into like all aspects of my life as well into everything that I do. Um, yeah. And I do put a lot of pressure on myself and I'm very hard on myself, but I know that in a way that's something that yep, we need to manage, we need to work on, but in a way I wouldn't have been able to achieve many of the things that I haven't without that attitude as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Does it make you feel good that like a lot of the pros and Olympians have that mindset too that you have? Like they have trouble slowing up. So it's like you've actually you've been born with this. Like it's a yeah. good Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Sure. Yeah. And I think something else about bodybuilding that I like that I reckon you'll like as well is that how you can't fake it. Like you can take peds, but you still can't fake shit. Like you can't do anything that's like you have to do the shit to get there. You know what I mean? Like you can't fake I hate fake shit. And I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> It's a sport for me. Um, it's the best. Um, what's your favorite thing about off seasons as well? Do you love? Do you just love building and eating more? Like, what's your favorite thing about being in, deep in the off season? Hmm. One thing I love about it's probably just like you've got to get a little bit uncomfortable. Like being on prep's easy. Like obviously it's hard on that day to day, but it's easy in that sense that you know you're in a calorie deficit. You know you're going to get lean. You know you're going to get shredded. It's like that off season is like you're going to have to step into uncomfortable like reins that you haven't before and you're gonna have to put on a little bit more body fat here and there you're gonna have to be, be feeling a little over full and stuff because you've got to be in a surplus or actually ain't growing right so I suppose I like that like uncomfortable thing and then it's freaking cool because you're strong you're like mm -hmm. you're big and I suppose like for me I'm seeing like my physique is like now that even though I am off season back in the day when I didn't have as much muscle, I wouldn't really look like a bodybuilder. I just look like a standard gal, you know? Um, whereas now it's like having that little bit of tissue behind you. is like, it's real motivating still being able to see like a few striations or still having lines in the legs. It's like, yo, this is gangster, you know? <laughs> it's so good. Motivating, eh? You're like you pump on, you're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> still Let's got. go. Let's like look this way. Let's do this shit. It's just, yeah, I'm just, I feel quite motivated at the moment and just like, motivators as and I know like I've worked through or working through like what I was going through and what I still am going through a little bit you know um yeah still going girl getting it done I love it what gym do you what gym do you do you train out of the same gym you PT out of or do you have like two different gyms because there's so many gyms in Christchurch I want to come down and go oh I am coming down for South Island so I'll be there for that but I want to check out all the gyms down there there's so many so where do you train from where do you PT out of so I PT out of Flex Fitness Record in Nice. Um, I've trained at like the Flex Fitness Rolleston. Um, trained at like the Lincoln once because I was going to PT there, but that's a little wee way out. Um, that was pretty much all the flexes that I've like kind of been to, but there obviously is more, you know. And then there's a few different city fitnesses. So like the main main one that I'll go to will be Morehouse, just because they've got like all these older pieces of equipment nice. that Morehouse like and. You know, like that old kind of, that old leg press, the old white one, not like the standard ones at City Fitness now. And it's um, it's kind of like goes like that on the platform and you can get like really good like quad focus because you can put your feet like bottom of the platform and get like good full range of motion. Um, and then I've got like, you know, some of the good pin loader presses for like incline, flat um, yeah. and like lateral raise machine. Um, they've got like a few good pieces of like hammer strength equipment, like your rows, your pull downs, um, that pin loaded, pin loaded, I think life fitness. Shit, that's great to get like the oh, one yeah. up, like the elbow yeah. down to hit. Um, yeah, I love that. Yeah, those would be the main ones. And then, oh, we do train a bit at body core as well. Oh, um, yeah. not body core, it's, um, sorry, it's. Hyperbolic now. Hyperbolic. Oh, hyperbolic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, nice. Yes. One and yeah. Cool, babe. Nice. And tell us about your sponsors. Who are you, who are you sponsored by at the moment? Um, and give us your codes and all that stuff too. Yeah, sweet. So Strom, 
<laughs> well, um, yeah, so Strom Sports Nutrition. Um, you can use code Georgia, I think it is now, um, at checkout, and you can grab free shipping on your products. And they do have like some clearance deals and stuff like that. But obviously, Thomas he imports supplements from you know overseas, so some of them can be you know a higher price because they are like at a higher quality and higher caliber. So, um, but yeah, definitely worth worth it. And I always find that you know if you're an athlete and you want to give it everything you know even if it's like okay i've got to pay an extra maybe 30 bucks for the supplement i know that it's a lot more quality so i know i'm gonna get that much more out of it like i never used to be like i don't need pre-workout i don't need that shit but i'm like if it's going to help me get better session and better results then fucking nice 100 yeah i love that babe that's cool and if you if you're out there right now and, and you've got you've got a coach ask your coach should i be taking it is there anything else that can help me or whatever and get you there and don't just take a supplement because it's like it's a trend or you know like utilize what you actually need um and yeah just ask questions ask questions to any like i mean i'm happy to answer questions about supplements and strong supplements and stuff um if anyone has any questions about their products then fire them through there's a lot out there that you can take don't take everything but there's a lot you can take out there man so like everyone just reach out and ask if you need some help with it what are you taking at the moment um in terms of just like pump and pre, yeah. um, yeah. so we've got like this combat dynamite pre from Strom. We've got like the train by JP dial in. Um, we actually got like this Mountain Dew product, Mountain Dew, not Mountain Dew, <laughs> like Mountain Dew pump product. Like it's a Mountain Dew flavor, but it's so freaking strong. It's, uh, oh no, not good. Um, <laughs> nah, got that. And then we got like this Apollo pre workout over in Aussie. Um, mm. the guy, one of the guys there, like recommended it, and that's that gets you stimmed out. Eh? Like, I felt so stimmed out my last like hard leg day. I was like freaking bouncing on the walls. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> they got different regulations in Aussie, eh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, but um, just in terms of like health ups and stuff, like real big on digestion. So it's pretty basic. You don't need to keep, you don't need to make it complicated. You know, you just want to keep things moving so just like acv lemon juice glutamine those are the, like, the three staples and then you can always add like a greens or a, a husk psyllium husk on top of that if you're not getting enough fiber from your diet but obviously fiber from whole foods and and your diet rather than actually like supplements is much better in my opinion yeah. sure for sure it's just whatever you're not i'm not quite high iron i don't know about you so I, I actually do take an iron supplement and take it along some vitamin c just to help their um absorption for sure. Yeah, and get your bloods done, girls, if you haven't. Like, <laughs> just do it. Yeah, important, yeah. Yeah, because you might be low in iron and you might be high in iron. And if you're high in iron and you're taking iron, that can also be detrimental. So it's good to just, uh, just get your bloods done. Like, fuck it. And sometimes your doctor will be like, nah, why do you need it? Just fucking push them. Get your bloods done. Like, you're allowed to. It's like when I was, like, a bit run down and sick recently, I was like, oh, can you, like, get my, like, hormonal panels done for me as well? And they're like, why, why? You know, it's and like. Mate, because I'm an athlete, you need to, you know. <laughs> I'm fucking asking you, that's why I'm paying you, so <laughs> just give me like. Yeah, if you do bodybuilding, whether you're natural or not, you should 100% get bloods. 100%. 100%. And just push them. They'll do it. Push them or go see someone else because it'll happen, and there's no reason they can't anyway. So, yeah, just do it for your health, right? <laughs> A little bit of advice at the end there, everyone, but it's good stuff. Um, well, that's it. That's all I have for you, babe. Did I miss anything that you wanted to share or anything like that or any bits? Not like, not a lot to what I can think of really. Like pretty much covered everything. Had a good chat, but yeah. yeah if anyone has like any questions about the pod or like something I like sparked or you know, just feel free to like click me a message. I'm happy to like answer anything. And sure, Shannon is as well. But again, yeah, thanks for having me on and it's road to one hundred, eh? Yeah, <laughs> road, to yeah. road to pro too, eh? Road to pro. <laughs> Is that the goal? Yeah. I'll get there one day, babe. I'll let you know when it happens. <laughs> Might I'll be years I'll see. I'll be supporting. <laughs> Thanks, babe. And go everyone, go check out G Patch's YouTube. I'll put it in the link below. But just to keep up with what you're doing and see what, what you've got planned and what your what your training's like and all that stuff. Um and yeah, we'll get you on again when you're ready for your pro debut. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for listening. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll be back in with another episode soon. Stay tuned to our Instagram to find out more and we'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone. Bye.